taking out student loans was the worst, was the single-handedly worst mistake I've ever made in my entire life. At this point, like, a college education is pointless. It was pointless. It, there's no hope. I've been paying on my student loans for more than 13 years now, and I've more. Yo, that is insane. Paying off student loans for 13 years? She had a mortgage the whole time. 13 freaking years to pay off a student loan. She must not be paying too much towards it. More than paid back the amount that I took out, and then some because of interest. <laughs> And there's all this like misinformation and false hope around forgiveness and qualifying payments and just <laughs> and I checked the boxes for 90% of the qualifying factors <laughs> but I'm gonna have to pay on my loans for another five years oh minimum and that's if there's even any type of program around that time for forgiveness before I can even qualify, even though I meet the qualifications now. But because I don't check that one last box, there, there's nothing that can be done. So what she's talking about is she's on an income-based repayment plan, which is probably one of the worst things you can do for student loans because... When you do income payment repayment, your in your amount that you owe is gonna keep going up if what you're paying is not enough to cover the interest, which is probably the case that she's in right now. She's not paying enough towards the interest. I mean towards the payment, interest is too much, so it just keeps adding on and adding on and adding on. She needs to stop worrying about the government trying to save her because the Supreme Court already shot that crap down. The only way you're going to get your loans forgiven is if you went to a fraudulent college or if you die. Those are the only two ways that you can get your loans forgiven. So she might as well just get her ass together and pay off these loans and stop playing around with them. Nothing has made me feel more hopeless and just helpless and just at full defeat than these student loans. I was just sitting here contemplating about like how I'm going to pay back all my student loans because still have not devised a plan that's going to work for me yet because I was thinking you know how like there's the save plan it's like the income based repayment plan or whatever so I signed mm -hmm. up for that with my old job course, not the one I have now stuff. but with my old job the based on my income that I had then uh, my payment was going to be like $40 a month which I was like hell yeah now I can actually like afford to pay on this for the rest of my life like it'll be fine then I realized like that's not even going to cut into like the interest that this shit's going to accrue so like are they just trying to keep this over my head for the rest of my life? Like, like, why not just give me a job that can pay me enough to pay this? You know, like, why, why do we have to have all these safe plans and income-based tuition repayment? Like, just make college cheaper. Like, why do we have to come up with all these government-funded programs that cut into tax dollars, and that's going to keep me in debt for the rest of my life? Like, that doesn't sound like a good solution to me. But, like, yeah, either pay more or make college cheaper. It's pretty fucking simple. Well, they're never going to make college cheaper because ever since they started the whole government-funded loans, prices just went out of control, went crazy because they guaranteed the loans. So it was like, what's going on with Kamala Harris right now? If she gives everyone $25,000 for a first-time home, you think all those home prices are going to stay the same? Absolutely not because that $25,000 is guaranteed from the government. Meaning those houses are going to go up at least $25,000. Same thing is going to happen. That happened with colleges. I owe $303,000 in student loans. Let's go over what the payment looks like. Okay, if I do like a 10-year basic plan, I owe all these each month on each student loans. I have 26. So it's 205, 47, 26, 261, 254. The list goes on. But I'm going to do the income-based repayment plan, but I'm not always going to do this. But right now it makes the most sense. I think this is based on my tax return from like two years ago. I don't know. Also could be wrong. I'm waiting to figure it out. But this is my monthly payment. It's 1142. It says if I stay on this payment, which I'm not going to, I'll eventually switch. It'd be three hundred and seventy one thousand dollars. I paid off in twenty forty three and I would be forgiven two hundred and ninety six thousand. You might think it's it's great to be forgiven two hundred and ninety six thousand. It's not, you have to pay taxes on it. So mm -hmm. interest starts back tomorrow. Yep, that's one thing they own that they don't tell you. If you ever, ever get your loans forgiven, you still owe the taxes because that counts as income. Most of y'all still don't even make enough money to cover the taxes on the forgiveness if you were to be able to get that. So it's, it's a lose-lose situation.
I obviously was late planning everything, so I'll let you guys know who my final monthly payment is. Let me know if you have questions. These student loans, like the calls, are really making me regret ever going to college, considering I'm not even doing anything in my degree. But like these calls are just a reminder that I'm like, first of all, doing nothing with my life. Second of all, broke as shit. And yes, I hee hee ha ha about it here, but like it's literally not a joke. It's like embarrassing and it's like the most stressful thing and i never want to be the person that's like dri driven by money like that's not me but like sometimes i wish i was so i wouldn't be in the position i am in and like dealing with these calls and having to basically say my situation like i literally cannot pay off an amount on these damn student loans and then the fact that they're so relentless, they call every person in my family, they call people not related to me, but like associated with me. And I don't even know how they, it's just crazy. And it's like, I hate it. It's like, you're coming at me for my own little debt when this country's in debt. Like I just, it's so frustrating and it gets me so angry. And literally it's like, I avoid these calls at all times. They send me into full-on panic attacks. But then sometimes I just have to make the call because they're calling everyone else in my life. And it's so frustrating. And yes, maybe I did it to myself. Maybe I should be smarter about money. Maybe I should just take on any job that like will pay me and I'm luckily finally starting a job, but it's not what I want to be doing, not using my degree, it's, it's, a, it's another serving job, it's fucking working at Hooters at 28 years old, living back at home, it's like, and then it's moments like these that make me question whether anything I want to do in life is going to happen, like at this stage, because it's so annoying. <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely relate to what, to what she's saying right now because I used to work for rent a center. If you guys know what that is, that's a store where you go out, rent uh, furniture, TVs, phones for a ridiculous price, and usually you and it's a rent to own. So usually you end up renting to own it about three three and a half times more than what it would be if you were to just go to the store like Best Buy and just bought the thing outright. So when people didn't make their payment, we'd have to call them. We call their sisters, their brothers. We call their landlords. We call their mom, their dad, whatever references they put down on the paper, and we would hound them three, four times a day. I actually quit Rent a Center because I went to go pick up someone's couch that they haven't paid for. They made one payment on it and didn't pay for it, and this was in Brooklyn, New York, in Flatbush made one payment stopped paying for it for a month went to go pick up the couch uh my manager sent me there by myself and mind you this couch was up a flight of stairs and it had a bed in it so it was like impossible for me to carry it by myself they sent me there by myself told me that i have to get into her apartment call the store and they'll send someone else out to help me that ended up turning into a fight where she assaulted me and she punched me in my face, like got me in a headlock, punched me in my face and ran back into an apartment because all this was happening outside of her door. So after that, I said, yo, never again. I'm never doing a job like that again. But yeah, I definitely understand with the how annoying it is to have like, collectors calling you constantly all day long, your job, your family, everybody. And I just had to vent because fuck it all. Paying off your student loan just isn't worth it. So don't do it. I recently paid off my student loan, but I'm gonna tell you exactly why I regret it. I've been chipping away at my student loan for years. And then one day it just dawned on me, just get it done. You know what, just get it done. Just pay the thing off, you have the money. Free yourself of debt little by little. And for reference, it wasn't that big, it wasn't that much, it wasn't that little, it was just under $8,000. So a little chunk, That's a little chunk good. came out of my bank account. I did this on a Wednesday, so I'm like hyped. I got rid of this debt, they send me the payment confirmation, and so for the rest of the week, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Nelnet to say something, to do something. I wasn't expecting no like edible arrangements, I wasn't expecting 
anything crazy. I wasn't expecting like some gift card in the mail, but I wanted some email that said like, congrats, like you did it. Like, good job, Ashley. Maybe like some balloons, like maybe some, some art, like a gif, something. So what? the rest of the week goes by, the weekend goes by, and then finally I sign into my account and it just says status paid in full, just like that. That's right, that's all you need. Nothing. The only person that was excited was me. You greedy mother, you mean to tell me we've been in this relationship of repayment for years and you couldn't even say bye? All I'm saying is like, if your love language is like words of affirmation or like you have a praise kink, don't expect Nelnet, Sally Mae, like don't expect them to say good job when you pay off your student loan. I'm just warning you. Yeah, I don't know why you would look for words of affirmation from a company that you owe money to. Crazy. I absolutely did borrow that money, you're right. But when I started borrowing, there was actually a rule, a regulation rather, that creditors could not use my student loans against me in determining whether or not to lend to me. In other words, they couldn't look at my student loan balance when selling me a house. They couldn't look at my student loan balance when selling me a car. Okay, those rules changed after I graduated. Yeah, so I was borrowing under a certain set of terms and then the terms changed out from underneath me. Moreover, many people when they started borrowing could declare bankruptcy on those balances mm -hmm. if things got out of control. Congress, Joe That's Biden psych. was a part of the committee at the time, changed that. So would you like to enter into a contract where the terms could change on you at any time? I want to Well, people do that every single day. They do it with the credit cards. They do that when they get um, adjustable rate mortgages. And I think those are the only two things where they act where can actually change your interest rate. Also, something I actually read is that if you miss a payment on any of your accounts that you owe money on, every other account that you have, even if it's not with that bank or financial institution, they can also jack up your interest rates, including your insurance. It's crazy world we live in right now. The best thing to do is to not owe anyone anything. Let's talk about student loans real quick because I just found out something that is so frustrating. This is my current student loan balance, $21,444. My original amount was $28,500. So you can see I've already paid off around $7,000 worth of my student loans, which yes, I am really proud of. But I felt like I was doing everything correctly. And today I called up my student loan servicer, Ed Financial, and I said, hey, I just want to make sure that my overage that I am paying every month, because the amount that they quoted me that I should be paying towards my student loans every month is $250, at least somewhere around there. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to pay $500 a month. I'm going to double it and pay $500 a month. So I'm paying off that principal faster. And while yes, I'm paying off that principal a little bit faster, the lady that I spoke with on the phone told me that I can't actually choose where that payment goes. So even though I'm paying $250 extra, I can't say put that amount towards my principal. Yeah, and what that lady told her is actually a complete lie because it, again, it is against the law in every state for you to be told that. You have you know, the right to pay as much principal as you want after you make your initial payment. It is against the law for you for, for anyone to do that to you. But that's what they tell them to do. Tell them that you can that you're not able to pay up the principal balance so that they can keep you in debt longer and longer. Had the same situation when I was paying off my cargo van. I called them, asked them if I could make extra payments. They said no, you can't because this is some type of daily interest rate or some crap like that. Then I spoke to a rep when I was going to sign a contract for my next vehicle. They said you absolutely can pay in your principal balance after you paid what you owe for that month, but you have to call them. And that actually turned out to be the case. So they tell people when you're on the phone with them not to not allow you to pay on the principal balance. They do this all the time and it's an absolutely it's absolutely illegal to do that. And the reason being that these numbers that they set saying, here, this is the suggested amount that we think that you should pay towards your student loan is usually only really covering the bare minimum. And the reason that they do this is so that you're still accruing interest. 
And if you have unpaid interest because you're paying so low on your loans, that interest will then start accruing interest. And even though you're making these payments, your, your loan amount is going to keep going up because the interest accru accrues interest and it's just a never ending cycle. So I went in and looked and you can see here, this is my last payment. I paid $500, $318 of that went towards my principal, around 181 went towards my interest. And if you can see here back in October, I paid $223 in interest, which is only $25 less than my payment. And so I asked her on the phone, I said, hey, what's going on with that? And she said, you actually have unpaid interest. And I was like, okay, yeah, you know what, that makes sense. But I didn't realize my interest was accruing interest because I have these unsubsidized loans. So even though I graduated in 2020, right into a forbearance period, I this still had interest from when I was in college. So I said, okay, great. That that's definitely my bad. I didn't really realize that. But can I pay that can I pay that unpaid interest now so that it stops accruing more interest? And she said, actually, no, just like the fact that you can't go in and say, put this money towards my principal, you also can't go in and say, okay, put this money towards my unpaid interest. So even though today I have $229 of unpaid interest, I can't say, here, Ed Financial, here's $229 to cover that unpaid interest. So that unpaid interest will continue accruing interest until my loans are completely paid off. And this is the root of the entire problem right here. It is my money, it is my loan. I should be able to say where it goes, obviously within reason. I understand it's a loan, I understand it's accruing interest, but if I have unpaid interest, I should be able to say, here is the money, please pay the interest. Or just be transparent with me about where my money is going, what is supposed to be paid, and how to pay it. Yeah, I think she messed up when she said she put in $500 every time she made a payment. That's a problem because what she should have did was paid the minimum of what she owed, called them and said, okay, now I'm going to take this amount and put it towards the interest. And they cannot tell her no. It's illegal for them to tell her no, she can't do that. All I want to say is thank God I skipped college. I went to college. I went to City Tech in Brooklyn, New York, downtown Brooklyn. I didn't learn a damn thing there. I don't understand why they have to add up all these other classes that have nothing to do with what I went to college for. I went to college on computer engineering. I don't know why I had to go take a math class. My math teacher, his name was Mr. Blank, and all I learned from him was blank. Not a goddamn thing. Thank God I dropped out. I dropped out in two months. I went to college for two months and dropped out. I said, you know what, this ain't for me. And thank God I did. Otherwise, I wouldn't be in probably in the same situation as them.